it's time once again for Uncle Matt's Bedtime Story. Hello everybody, it's Uncle Matt and I'm here to read you another bedtime story. And tonight's bedtime story may be familiar to you. I've known it as a movie and now it's written here and illustrated here in this book format. It is called E.T. The Extra Terrestrial. Um, based on the film written by Melissa Matheson and directed by Steven Spielberg, illustrated by Kim Smith. And this story was copyright in 2017. Are you ready? Here we go. It was the week before Halloween. Elliot wanted to play with his brother Michael, but Michael said no. Come on, guys, Elliot pleaded. I can fight goblins, too. Just go get the pizza, Michael said. Elliot went outside and paid the delivery man. On the way back inside, he heard a noise coming from the shed. Elliot lived near a forest. Sometimes coyotes wandered into the shed, but these footprints didn't look like coyote tracks. And coyotes don't roll balls to kids. It definitely wasn't a coyote. Elliot tried to tell his family, there's a goblin in the shed, a real goblin. Where's the pizza, Michael asked. No one believed Elliot's story. The next day, Elliot went beyond the shed and into the woods to look for the goblin. He saw people with strange equipment searching for something. Were they looking for the goblin too? If they found it, what would they do to it? Elliot had to find the goblin first. That night, after everyone was asleep, Elliot left a trail of candy from the shed into the house, up the stairs, and into his room. It turned out the goblin liked candy. The next day, Elliot introduced the goblin to Michael and to his little sister, Gertie. Michael and Gertie quickly realized what Elliot had learned the night before. The goblin was kind and very smart. The kids were excited and curious about their new friend. He seemed too nice to be a goblin. Maybe he's a monkey, said Michael. I don't like his feet, said Gertie. We are here home. Elliot said, where are you from? The goblin pointed up to the sky. Then he used his powers and some fruit and vegetables to create a model of his solar system. The goblin wasn't a goblin at all. He was an extraterrestrial, an alien from another planet. Elliot called him E.T. for short. Meanwhile, the people looking for E.T. were getting closer. The next morning, the kids went off to school. Their mom was leaving for work and she heard a noise coming from the closet. But when she opened the door, all she saw were stuffed animals. After she left, E.T. had the house all to himself. He went exploring. First, he made friends with the local wildlife.
<coughs> Excuse me. The next morning, the kids went off to school. Their mum was leaving for work, and she heard a noise coming from the closet. But when she opened the door, all she saw was stuffed animals. After she left, E.T. had the house all to himself. He went exploring. First, he made friends with the local wildlife. Then he got something to eat. He found a toy to play with and something to read. He watched the television and learned about Earth, all its forms of communication, all of which gave him an idea if only he could find everything he needed. When Gertie came home, she taught E.T. the alphabet. B is for balloon, she said. B, E.T. said. Yes, Gertie. B. Good. Elliot got home, and not much later, he found E.T. in his closet. Gertie and E.T. were playing dress-up together. Elliot, E.T. said. I taught him, <laughs> I taught him to talk, Gertie bragged. Elliot found the box of items that E.T. had collected. He cut himself on a saw blade. Ouch, Elliot yelped. Ouch, E.T. said. His fingers began to glow. E.T. touched his fingertip to Elliot, and the cat, though the cut healed. Wow. Then E.T. showed Elliot and Gertie a drawing of something he wanted to build. It looked like a radio home phone. E.T. said. Oh, phone home, E.T. said. E.T. worked all the radio all night. Meanwhile, the people who were looking for E.T. were getting even closer. E.T. wanted his family to find him and take him home, but he had to hurry. E.T. wasn't meant to be... Um, Okay, let's read that again. E.T. worked on his radio all night. Meanwhile, the people who were looking for E.T. were getting even closer. E.T. wanted his family to find him and take him home. But he had to hurry. E.T. wasn't meant to be live on Earth. He was just starting to feel sick. The next day was Halloween. It was part of the plan, the perfect plan to get E.T. into the woods where he could use the radio to learn a clear signal home. Michael and Ellen pretended that E.T. was Gertie. Huh. Practice. Off they went into the streets in broad daylight. No one suspected a thing. Some of the costumes made E.T. think of home. Away from other trick-or-treaters, Elliot and E.T. got on Elliot's bike and headed into the woods. When the bike ride got too bumpy, E.T. took over. Together, they ran off most of the ground and soared through the sky. Huh. Elliot woke up cold that next morning. He and E.T. had been in the woods all night. By the time they got home, the people who were searching for E.T. were at Elliot's house. They were scientists and they wanted to learn about E.T. They put him in a box to bring him to their lab. As Elliot was saying goodbye, E.T.'s chest started to glow. E.T. phone home, E.T. said. Does that mean they're coming? asked Elliot. Yes, said E.T. Elliot knows and knew this was 
his last chance to help E.T. While the scientists were busy packing up their equipment, Elliot and Michael snuck E.T. out of the house. Michael's friends brought their bikes and they all raced towards the wood. The scientists chased them. To escape, E.T. had his powers again all used the bird. <laughs> To escape, E.T. used his powers again, and all the boys soared up into the sky. When they reached the forest, the giant spaceship was landing. Fun. Elliot was sad that his friend had to go. E.T. was sad, too. The tip of E.T.'s fingers lit up, and he touched Elliot's forehead. I'll be right here, said E.T., Elliot knew he would always remember their ex extraordinary friendship. The end. Wow. Interesting story. That is all the time we have for Uncle Matt's bedtime story. I hope you enjoyed that story, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.